city and county owned properties that they can convert into winter shelters is actually an attempt by both the city and the county to address the El Nino situation. Um, of the hundred million that the uh, city had that big uh, press conference uh, led by the mayor and, and city council members, um, come to find out there was only thirteen million dollars that they had in hand and had to find. They have to. They still have to find the other uh, eighty-seven, which they said they'll start looking next year. But what the mayor did do was repurpose. It was actually that like, said thirteen, twelve point four, whatever the, the number is, twelve point something. That he allocated all of that to towards winter shelters to address the, the El Nino uh, circumstances of what you're talking about. So. And the county is also doing the same, and I can just speak to a big um, a, 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 a newsworthy topic where, thank you, thank you please, um, where there's a big topic in Northeast Los Angeles where both council members, uh, Weezar and Cedillo, actually came together to save uh, Winter Shed. Why it may not be in Skid Row specific, um, because if you look around Skid Row, it, 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 it's not up and running already, and it's kind of difficult. It requires so much more. That's what the city's determined. And so, you know, they're trying to figure now maybe we can campaign to get some shuttles that can take us to and from shuttle buses, vans, or something to that extent. So well I, I, I can throw out a specific suggestion. Um, Operation Healthy Street. I don't know the name of the machine. It's a big truck with a gigantic hose and as they power wash the sidewalk it sucks up a whole lot of water and throw it in this gigantic thing <laughs> on wheels. Okay. I don't know how much those things cost. I don't know how many there are. I don't know how many other cities or states. We should have a fleet of those heading for Skid Row right now for no other reason to be on the street sucking up the water that ain't going down the drain. The, uh, the, the vehicle, just for everyone that, that's in the building, the vehicle you're talking about is the Factor 2100. <laughs> um, it's the big blue, the big blue trucks. And so, um, the problem in 2009, which you're talking about, um, was because they said the storm drains were blocked up. When they started Operation um, Healthy Streets, they actually went inside, they uh, took the manhole covers off each and every last one of the storm drains. That was a part of the fact of how the city uh, mitigated um, when they were cited by the county health department when there was ex excessively high concentration of rat infestations. So they put those big tubes down inside of the storm drains and sucked up all the rats, debris, all that kind of stuff and loosened up the storm drains. So which they said now, in effect, if there is uh, a huge rainstorm, the storm drains should work a lot better. We won't see what you exactly what you're talking about on Los Angeles. That's what the city's saying, but we still have to monitor that. And as a Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee, we will monitor that. And if it doesn't work out, we can have an emergency meeting and we can send shoot letters all over the city. Thank you, Tom. Yes, I was at the um, Ashla meeting, I believe it was, um, two Saturdays ago. You were there, Tom. Um, there were um, several people from the Valley um, that evening who were speaking about um, shelters, uh, the whole decentralization of Skid Row that they're planning after the first, uh, after the, first of the year. And uh, there were all these people were talking about warming shelters. Uh, it seemed like it was a lot of people who had no clue as, to, as far as how to start a shelter, but there are a lot of people in the room, um, the, mainly from the valley, from what it appeared to me, who were talking about, you know, they had this, the El Nino was the, the buzzword. It felt like it was like a very sensationalized buzzword throughout the evening, but it was very much centered around, uh, the shelter that they were talking about was very much around um, the El, oh, El Nino effect. And um, the other thing I just want to say in regards to Ms. Lyle sitting here is that, uh, again, I'm a mental health care advocate. Um, I've gotten to know Ms. Lyle through um, a, a lot of uh, mental health initiatives. Um, I have uh, attended the mental health commission along with her, and um, um, we stay in contact uh, off record. Um, and also is that um, um, at the uh, various conferences that I've attended in regards to mental health, you know, we do have a new uh, mental health uh, executive director that's going to be um, stepping up. And, um, and it's time now really to, uh, now that there's going to be a change going around, that we need to really make them pay attention and, and hold them accountable when it comes to um, our community. And, and again, Skid Row is probably African American by huge, drastic numbers. 
And why is that important? It's been important because of uh, cultural competency and culture and lack of cultural humility. And when you're at these mental health conferences, they often talk about cultural competency, which has to do with adverse situations which may negatively impact a person or subgroup. Skid Row is screaming cultural competency issues. And what's happening is this is a, it's the same old rhetoric of how people go about implementing policies and procedures. Um, people who have who do not understand the, the demographics and, and who we are as a people, and therefore are not um, they they lack cultural humility when it comes to implementing the needs for our community. One thing that Michelle attached me to, I cannot do this alone. I need you in the room. When I'm in the room alone, if I'm, my voice is muffled by 15 others, I need them to see why I'm saying we need the help in the start with Skid Row. We need to improve the services. And it's available, but I need you. So please, if you can get, attend these three meetings, they make a difference in the Holly Department of Mental Health, actually, in yeah. the service. So I need you there. Thank you. And just so you guys know, um, a lot of you are meeting Commissioner Sharon Lyle for the first time. Um, she's one of us. She's the people. She doesn't live in Skid Row, but she cares deeply about us. You know, when I when we I was going up to Sacramento, you know, for the last couple of years, um, we put a delegation together. Uh, Dr. Diane Woods did, and you know, Sharon and I were on the same team, and Sharon was right there speaking about campaigning for Skid Row just as much as I was. And you know how hard I go for Skid Row. So Commissioner Lau was right there with us. She's been there with us for years. So she's still here. She wants to physically show up for this meeting to let you all know she's here and everything she can do to help. And she's been going hard on the Mental Health Commission saying, no matter what solutions that you come with, you've got to start in Skid Row where there's a high concentration of mentally ill. And she's been banging on them so hard. And you know, I love her to death for that. And it's like, we have to support what she's pushing. If we don't show up, her, like she just said, her voice is minimalized. So, you know, put, you know, give us the information. We'll put it out there on the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee website. And, you know, we'll, hey, we got to show up and support Commissioner Lott. All right, are y'all with us? Tony Evans. Like I said, Skid Row is for everyone, no matter what color you are, okay? Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. So, we're going to hold questions because we want to you know, keep this moving and we want to talk about um, the boundaries. We're going back to the Skid Row Labor Council agenda, the boundaries. And so, um, a part of the application process, hold your question, brother. I got you next. Um, a part of the, the application process to become a school of the council, uh, not only do we have to uh, get a uh, minimum of 200 signatures on the petition, we also have to determine what our boundaries are going to be. What do we propose our skid row boundaries are going to be? So we're not, I repeat, we are not taking a vote tonight on what our boundaries should be because now this, just like Brother Deacon said, we need to take a little more thought on as far as this vote, but we don't want to rush because this is something we're going to write down on paper. And you have to live with it. And you have to live with it, exactly that. So, I'll just say this, as a community activist, you know, myself and others, we've been pushing for, based on the same thing of what the Jones versus the City of Los Angeles basically said with the City of Los Angeles in that settlement agreement, the City of Los Angeles voluntarily offered on themselves, by themselves, and said the boundaries of Skid Row are from 3rd to the north, 3rd Street to the north, 7th Street to the south, Main Street to the west, and Alameda Street to the east. 50 city blocks, 5-0. It's a whole different 5-0. And so, we've been pushing it. That's what the city said. So if that's what Skid Row is, that's what we're claiming it, and that's what we've been pushing. And so now, with the Skid Row Neighborhood the Council, and you know, that was, you know, LA Can used to be on Main Street, this was years ago, and you know, it was us on one side, they were on the other side, but now, you know, the Nickel Diner, you know, my artisan house, damn, is that my time again? <laughs> and so, um, you know, Main Street has changed. You know, Pete's is no longer there, you know, people don't understand the revitalization of downtown Los Angeles 
A lot of people get credit to Peace Cafe. Peace Cafe technically was in Skid Row. So if you want to talk about the revitalization of all of downtown Los Angeles with Tom Gilmore and Associates, it started in Skid Row. Everything on the eastern side of Main Street is ours. You know, so, so it's ours. And so, you know, that's, as a community activist, that's why I cut down the chair of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. I'm neutral. I cannot influence you in any way, shape, or form. But I will say that we need to actually have this discussion in terms of what folks think the boundaries should be. So now, to the immediately to the east, based on what the city of Los Angeles said, based on the 50 blocks theory, uh, Alameda Street is our border, and right across the street is the Arch District. Um, the Arch District itself does not have an Arch District Neighborhood Council. They're a part of the H HCNC, which is Historic Cultural Neighborhood Council, and there is zero dispute on that board. Immediately south from here is 7th Street. Um, the South Central Neighborhood Council, I believe, is the, 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 the next neighborhood council to the south of us, and there is zero dispute on that boundary. The dispute will come from our western border and our northern border. So immediately north of us on Third Cross Third Street is Little Tokyo. Um, Little Tokyo, their actual neighborhood council on the ACNC, their borders actually extend into Skid Row. They have a weekly line and over by um, the uh, uh, third and actually and third and central, and their border comes up to Fourth Street, and so. Um, and it goes back in over by town and it comes back down third on, on the way from San Pedro all the way over. And so, but the, uh, the uh, Little Tokyo Mall, which is that technically in Skid Row, um, the courts of ACNC, they claim that it's their boundaries. Skid Row, work. we weren't there for that border fight or border, border discussion. And so the city went in. Oh, okay. Oh. Here on uh, Main Street, the downtown center is made with council. They say their resident borders start at Los Angeles, which is one block east, which is one block past where we claim our borders to be. So last month, I had a discussion with someone working for Dunn, and I mentioned that, I said, we don't, we're scared wrong. we're fighting enough as it is as a community. We don't want to fight if they have a border fight. We don't want to fight over borders. We want to scare on neighborhood council. We're going to have scare on neighborhood council. And we're going to go, but we're not, we don't want to get pushed around either. And so, what are our borders going to be? And so, when I mentioned to them, you know, about third to seventh Main to Alameda, um, what the reply was, that area may uh, qualify as an overlap zone. And there is zero neighborhood councils in the entire neighborhood council process that overlap on their boundaries. It's hard lines all the, with all of the 96 neighborhood councils. And so I was trying to, so that's why I was scrambling to try to print stuff out. I, you know, I try to actually get confirmation while I got it verbally. I wanted it in writing so that if that's true and that's how we can apply, then we'll just go ahead and have that overlap zone is what I'm thinking, but I, you know, that's for the whole group to decide as a community. And so um, I was unable to uh, get the uh, confirmation, but I got an email from the city, uh, from Dunn's office after 4 p.m. And I didn't able to print out the documents and I didn't get to read everything, so I'm not sure if they sent me something. I did not immediately see anything that was overlap zone specific, which is what I put in the request for. But so we're communicating, it's the holidays, we're gonna pick this up in the future. But as of right now, you know, that's what is on the table. Um, what the city has said our borders are from 2006. So this is less than 10 years ago. Boy, they don't change borders like that. So 3rd to 7th, Main and Alameda. Right, is there any discussion right now on Skid Row's borders? No. Hold on. If I show of hands, please. Luis. How can we prevent further loss of uh, schedule mileage? Is that preventable? 
in other words, how can we prevent from other neighborhoods to infringe upon these borders any further than they have already been doing in the past? That's an excellent question. And so by, uh, that's why we're having this boundary discussion right now, because once we establish what our boundaries will be, and once we turn in our application, and once the city signs off on those applications, those will be our borders until we decide to change them, if we decide to change them. So that's why we need to have the discussion amongst ourselves. Then we're going to need to talk to the downtown of Central Neighborhood Council. We're going to have to talk to uh, uh, Little Tokyo. We're going to have to talk to the Arts District. We're going to have to talk to South Central Neighborhood Council so that we can let them know this is what we're proposing. And before we put it and write it down in writing. And so a future, I can see a future uh, meeting, whether it be in Skid Row or it be in the historic core, which is right across Main Street. We may have to have just both communities have a complete neighborhood council meeting on border dis boundary discussions because they may have a problem with it, but, but that's why we're looking at the overlap option. I totally respect what you're saying about this process here, and obviously needs to be dialogue. And even if, if you know, arts district builds, I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot here. But, but my thing is, again, we are actually in a very strong position which is that we're dealing with boundaries that have been established by a federal court, okay? And I'll even tell you, I won't mention names, but I was at the D-Lank meeting, it was a leadership meeting, there was a new person brought in, there's only a handful of people, who was a lawyer, and he said, so what are the boundaries of Skid Row? And the other people in the room who knew, who had all of this information are like, Oh, I don't know, it might be that. Well, someone, well, I heard such, and I said, um, excuse me, they were established by a federal court in 2008. And the lawyer said, oh, okay, and they're, oh, I, I guess they were. So there is major bullshit around this whole issue. We are in an incredibly strong position because we have a federal court backing us up, and all other conversations and discussions have to take place in that context. If we don't do that, we deserve to get screwed. Uh -huh. and, and based on and based on those federal guidelines that you know, I know Tom very well. I know he's done the research. What do you know the borders of Skid Row to be? It's all Skid Row. Uh, literally, the the western border is the eastern half of Main Street. Cross the street, you're in the historic core. I, I'm going to be long here. I think the northern half of 7th Street is Skid Row. Cross the street and you're in the fashion district. I mean, it goes that way. On the one side of the street, you're in Skid Row. Cross the street and you're in another community. Yeah, exactly. And what are the other boards? Uh, Alameda and 3rd Street. So just as we've already said, 3rd to 7th Main Alameda. And so just to clarify what Tom was saying, the basic border is in the middle of the street. So in the middle of Main Street, like I said, one side is our, one side is theirs. In the middle of Third Street, one side, one side is theirs, and all the way around. Kevin Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. I, I tend to disagree. I think Main Street is Main Street is Main Street. Yeah. Main Street is where the most subsidized low-income housing is. And the Senator and the Dewey and all of that is on the west side. We don't need to cut our own selves short. All right? Main Street is the border. So you hit Main Street, whether it be the east side or west side of Main Street, is Skid Row. Because that's where most of the low-income housing is. It has more low-income housing than any other street. Now, they already going to make that argument. We know that. We don't need to give up half of Main Street because they're going to be grabbing for it anyway. My other thought that I just want to bring out is that there's going to be a vote. This is going to be the point of fighting for when we get our thing. Because when the um, next election comes, right, we have to win a majority of that vote saying that there's a Skid Row neighborhood council. Isn't that the subdivision process? So we need to start organizing. We need to come together. We've got numbers if we come together. 
And we don't need to give up our brothers and sisters on Main Street because they catching enough hell anyway. Did I beat you two minutes back? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, 30 seconds. So, so to be clear, actually, minute, but so, so just quickly, um, to be clear, what Kevin Michael was talking about was the subdivision folk. So now, I mentioned earlier, I did go into detail because I'm jump. I don't want to get overload you and overwhelm a lot of folks who are brand new to this with too much information at one time. So as we turn in our application, it gets approved by the city. What happens then is because we are already a part of the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, the subdivision process is for us to break away. What the breakaway process in just that part only is everybody within downtown Los Angeles' borders, downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council's borders, excuse me, they get to vote basically on whether to let us go and let us become a skip. It's not a skip row specific vote. So what Kevin Michael is saying, we're going to have to come together and get organized because we're going to go have to go out and speak to the other folks within that D Lake's boundaries, the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council's boundaries. And just like with this meeting tonight, that's when we got the great Bobby Buck right here filming this so that we can put this on the video so they can see, you know, we're, 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 we're a unique community, but we can't come together and have a civilized meeting where the people can sit in their seats for hours and have intelligent discussions about our community. That's why we got this on tape, and I really appreciate each and every one of you for staying the course and holding it down that long. So, but just understand, it is going to come to a vote, and that is the vote. But we, that, that comes that comes later in the process. You know, that's why I didn't bring it up initially. That comes later, but we just want to get everybody up to speed and get more people in the room because I want to keep repeating myself. Right, Susan. Uh, someone else has a hand up. Well, well, I'm going to say a little bit off topic where you're going, but oh, it's, yeah. I mean, well, I mean.